All right, Nasha. So the other day you were talking about doing a video or a segment, possibly talking about the most common mistakes that a new mixer could make. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't make mistakes. I was thinking to do that list, like, for you to help you. Right. Yeah, I read the list. I'm, I'm working on it. Do you want to do it? Yeah, let's, let's talk about what I could improve and what other new mixers could improve. So what, what is uh, one of the common mistakes that new mixers make? Using more flavoring is not always going to translate in a recipe as having a more flavorful recipe. Yeah, the common misconception being that adding more of something is going to give you more flavor, but that's just not true. That's not the way that these concentrates work. Yeah, I mean, almost all concentrates will have like a ceiling that you can go to. And then uh, over that, they're either uh, not useful or you're not getting any more flavor from it. Volkart, what's another one? I don't know. I lost my list here. Hold on a second. <laughs> so unprofessional. One of the, the mistakes that I made uh, at the beginning of my mixing career was not adding sweetener. So when you use sweetener, it's it's going to enhance the overall flavors that you're using. It's going to build up some of the fruits and it's going to bring some more of the syrup. Mm. It's going to bring some of the more syrupiness of other flavors. It's going to change and enhance the overall recipe. Right. So not using sweetener. When you try the recipe, you're not going to get the same flavor that you, you really want to nail. Like it, candies. Candies aren't sweet enough until you add sweetener. They need sweetener. Or in fruits, a sweetener can, can boost some aspect of that fruit. Don't be afraid of sweetener. All right, another one that uh, people tend to mistake is knowing when the recipe is actually done. I've had this problem for years. I am notorious for creating 50 different versions of a recipe. You know, sometimes you just got to say it's done, it's good enough, and move on to something else. If not, you're going to get bogged down and you, you you get obsessed with it. So just get to where you like it okay and then drop it. Come back later if you want to. Sometimes you keep going in a certain direction that you actually lose the course that you were originally on. Yeah, and not only... Knowing when, when it is good enough, knowing when it's not, and dropping a recipe is also good. Yep. If you already tried one million, one million version of that recipe, maybe it can be done. Maybe you need to move on. Or at least wait a few months and then come back to it. You may learn something new in those few months. Not mixing by weight is a huge mistake to new mixers because they don't want to buy the scale or whatever. <laughs> but... <laughs> Sorry. For whatever reason, I think a lot of people end up wanting to mix by volume in the beginning, which there's nothing wrong with that. But mixing by scale is so much easier. You just pull out the scale, pull out the bottle. You don't have to clean uh, pipettes or go through a whole bunch of pipettes or go through droppers. I mean, it, it actually saves money to mix by weight rather than volume because you know you save a lot of money uh, in not having to buy those, those pipettes all you need is a scale and they're not that expensive uh and it'll pay for itself in no time yeah scale is a one-time investment yep unless you break it but other than that it's a one-time investment <laughs> the name you find in the label is usually what someone single tasting that flavoring got from it and it is also attached to a, a commercial intention to, to get people to buy that flavoring. But it's different to the use of that flavoring or, or, or how that flavoring is going to behave in a recipe. Yeah, I mean, you, you could take custard. We talked about custard. Every one of them is completely different. Very few of them actually taste like a custard. Yeah, as a, as a beginning mixer myself, I went to the first um, vendor and bought flavorings that I thought I would like based on what they called it. That was a huge mistake, huge mistake, because almost all of them were terrible, terrible. That's, do, do not buy your flavors based on that. Especially if they say legendary or <laughs> premium or super. <laughs> yeah. They're just trying to pitch it a certain way to sell more product. Yeah. This one's going to get some hate. I hate it. The 
it's tedious, it's boring, it's not fun at all for me. It, it, if somebody if somebody sat down and started flavor testing all the flavors, if I started flavor testing all the flavors in my stash, I have like 1,500. I would go insane. Just use the flavor in mixes to see how it works. I'm not an advocate really for single flavor testing because I think you can really change your perception of the flavor where it's not good for real world usage. Like seeing how things work with each other, how certain compounds react to one another. I think you have to try mixing things together. That's what we do. We mix. You, you're not, you're not going to just single flavor test and just be done with it. You want to combine things. Right. If, if you want to single taste flavoring, do it. But that shouldn't be the base of knowledge for that flavoring. You should single taste it and use it. It can completely change the way it tastes on its own versus with other things. It might not be good with other things. For sure. Do not trust the hype. Don't do it. When new flavors come out, do not trust the hype. Wait until people like Noted or other people who get them firsthand that beta test them and get them, they get their hands on it first and they will tell you if it's good or if it's bad. Don't just because a new flavor house pops up and there's a whole new line of flavors doesn't mean they're all going to be good. You might just end up completely wasting your time and money. Yeah, if you if you hear or see everybody talking about a particular flavor, maybe it is because it's new and we just got that flavor and we all want to try it. But that doesn't mean that that flavor is is good. And also, we want new flavor. We're bored of all flavorings, so we're going to talk about it. And also, when you buy flavorings, try to go for the smaller size bottles. Don't buy 120 milliliters of Bavarian cream. It'll, it'll be on your shelf for years and years and years, and you'll never use it up. Go small. That's a big tip. Yeah, and, and the same applies when, when you hear someone or, or, or a group of people saying that this new equipment in mixing is going to be a revolution. Wait for Wait, wait for it. Wait for people to try it and to, to, to really uh, get the best or the worst out of it. Yeah, I want to ask the people who have a Vortex mixer and actually still use it or a magnetic stirrer. I am so glad that I did not buy one. I came this close to buying one. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't trust the hype. It's like thinking, okay, I can nail this like a coffee with car caramel and strawberries because I love it in real life. And it's, it's the worst idea to go after those really hard, complicated profiles when you're starting because it's very frustrating. frustrating. And maybe you, you can get there. Maybe you don't have the flavor for it. And you're going to spend a lot of money trying to, to pursue that dream yeah i mean if you if you want to go after hard profiles it's fine but just don't do it in the beginning because you are going to spend a lot of money yeah lower your expectations as a newer mixer if you're new at it you gotta you gotta go after some of the easier stuff you gotta accept that you're still learning right you have to go after stuff that's a little bit easier learn how how to use your creams how to use your bakers how to use your fruits dial that in then you can start getting ideas once you're trying stuff, you'll get those ideas and then you can actually try to, you know, implement them. Yep. Keep it simple. I had about a uh, hundred different flavorings and I had them in one box and it took me 30 minutes to find all the flavorings that I wanted because I didn't have them organized. Organization of your flavorings is so important. Yeah. And if there's one thing you can say about this hobby... You're going to get more flavors. Yeah, for sure. Don't lie to yourself. And also when you are developing a recipe, it's good to have a good visualization of all the flavors you have. It's, it's easier. Maybe you can get a new idea by watching the flavors if they are organized. And if you're spending all your time looking for flavors, it can be really frustrating. It's, you know, especially if you mix quite a bit. It's come up with a good way to organize your flavors. It'll save you so much headache. And then put them back, you filthy fucking animal. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep it 
under control. You got to consolidate certain things. You don't want to just keep piling on. You got to think about the layers that you're using and try to use as few layers that make sense to the recipe. A good way not to make that mistake is to see the, to think the recipe as a whole. Not as, okay, I need flour, I need uh, oil, I need butter. No, think the, the, the entire flavor that you get from that profile that you want to, to make the recipe for. Yeah, try to get something that goes in between two things. So the, we talk about bridge flavors, things that combine two elements of it. Mm -hmm. Complex recipes do not always mean complex flavor. Yeah. And nobody wants to mix a recipe with 15 fucking flavors in it. And don't put in the recipe random flavorings just because they taste good. I think this is one of the thing, the first things that a beginner mixer starts to do is just start putting drops in a bottle and just trying to think like, oh, this is going to work. It's never going to work. It's never going to work. <laughs> the positive guy. <laughs> it's, it's never going to work. Keep it simple. Right. Don't just throw anything, anything and everything in it. It's also good to think about the recipe and be wrong. It's better than putting things together and have bad luck because in the first one you learn, in the second one you don't. Right. The number one thing, you have to mix other people's recipes first. Yeah, for sure. Buy the flavors that other people have put into a recipe, mix those recipes, take your own notes, see what you get from it mix that stuff first yeah you'll learn about flavorings you'll learn about percentages you'll learn all the dynamics to making a recipe and it's a step one thing you cannot skip that step yeah learn from their mistakes or or learn from their expertise that's a different way of putting it but that's true they've put in the hard work you can learn a lot from other people so wait if we know all of this why do we make so many mistakes well, we don't follow the rules. We just put this list together. Like, <laughs> don't do as we do, do as we say do. We you, we have the key. It's your journey. I think we've said that before. <laughs> it's your journey. We're just holding the key for you. It's our car. You buy the gas. Yeah. There's a door in there somewhere too, right? That they're supposed to open oh, or something. Yeah. The key doesn't do much without the door. Yeah. That's the that's that's the saying. The key doesn't do much without the door. Yeah, and we put the the foot in the door. Yeah. Our foot, your <laughs> our key, your door, and it's your journey. <laughs> <laughs>